ready to cry. Say, let the glory, let the glory, let the glory, let the glory of the Lord Jehovah rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord hey, rise among us. Shall I raise his name? Rise among us. Rise among us. shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we pray, let your glory Jesus. fill this house. Your promise is to us is to Hallelujah. us is that the glory of the of the latter days, oh God, of the for, will be better than that of the former. So God, fill our days, oh God, with your glory, with your presence in the name of Jesus. My Father, even as Carissa led us this morning, Father, that this gospel may not just come in enticing words, but in the demonstration of the power and of the Holy Spirit. My God and my King, let your glory be made manifest. Just as when Jesus was made manifest, the Bible says he was made manifest. We beheld his glory. We, beheld, we want to behold the glory of the living God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Marokoto baba basu koto maha rebe bebe bebe koshaya kataka mamaha maroko kosaya we are desperate lord we are desperate we are desperate we cannot do anything without you we need your presence we need your glory we need your power oh god in the name of jesus To him be glory, to him be glory, to him be glory forever and ever. To him, to him, 
a throne of fire. worship you this morning. We exalt you. Receive our adoration. Receive oh God, our love oh God. To you be the glory. Father, fill us oh God with your glory. Fill us oh God with your presence. Fill us oh God with your person. In the mighty name of Jesus.
but holy, 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 standing before, standing before your throne. There are no words to say. There are no words to say.
and tell him he is holy, he is God. He is worthy, there is no one else like him. He is the lamb slain before the beginning of time. Yes, by his blood he has redeemed us. By his goodness he has redeemed us. By his mercy he has drawn us out. By his grace he has favored us. We who were not a people before have become a people. He has redeemed us unto himself. What a holy God he is. What a great God he is. He is not the son of man that he should repent. He is not a man that he should lie. All he says is yes and amen. Whatever he has said, he is watching it to perform it. He is God, he is God, he is God, he is God. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Your glory fills the earth, Lord. Your glory fills the earth, Lord. Your glory fills my life, oh God. Your glory fills my life, oh God. Your glory fills me, oh God, your glory. Your glory fills my heart, oh God. Shababa bon soto bebe bebe. Zebaba bon seke tele 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 bebe usoyo. Rebaba ba. Zebaba bon soko to bebe 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 kosa ya katiba. Rebaba bon soko to bebe. Eba soyo. Shababa. Oh God, oh God, we praise you. We give the glory back to you, my God.
to stay in the heavens.
as we worship the Lord this morning, I'm just going to ask all of us, everybody that is able to, just to bow your knee. Let's just bow our knees before him as we continue to sing. We give you Just stand to our feet as we worship him one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
He is holy this morning. The Lord is holy this morning. Jesus. Kadosh, Kadosh, Oti. Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Oh, he who loved the things upon the throne. He alone is worthy of a prayer. Kadosh, 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 Kados
his name. Lift up his name. Lift up his name. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. He is God Almighty. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Come on, somebody. Lift up the name of the Lord our God. Mendresha Shakataya. Blessed, blessed, blessed be our God. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Woo! Shut up. Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. You're holy. You're holy. You're holy. We worship you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We worship you, Lord. Esha tayara babos. Esha tayara babos. Esha tayara babos. We worship you, Lord. Oh glory. Oh glory. Oh glory. Oh glory. Oh glory. He's the Lamb who sits upon the throne this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa. Blessed. Blessed be your name. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we cry upon the name of the Lord. He's worthy. The Lord is his name. Hallelujah. The Lord is his name. Hallelujah. Kadosh, he's a holy God. He's a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. 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 Let all that is within me cry holy. 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 Holy is the Lord. God Almighty. Holy, holy, Hallelujah. Holy. Hallelujah. He's the Lamb that sits upon the throne. Hallelujah. God has not abdicated His throne. God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. God is still on the throne. He still rules and reigns. Hallelujah. God is not taken by any surprise. Hallelujah. He is God. He is God besides Himself. He is God. Hallelujah. He changes not. God changes not. He's still the Alpha and the Omega. He's still the rising of the sun. He's still the one who forgives our sins. He still is the one who heals our disease. He's still the one who gives us joy. Hallelujah. God gives us joy, church. God gives us joy. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Jesus. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of the tabernacles. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Wow. Jesus. And it shall come to pass that those that do not worship him there shall be no rain. Speaking of the spiritual rain, that translates to the physical rain. 
He is God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just take that word and assimilate it. Hallelujah. Jesus. As we just stand to our feet, ready to hear the word of God, we just invite Apostle Cain to come and minister to us, his children, in Jesus' name. Why don't you just lift up your hands and begin to worship God or continue to worship God as Pastor Cain comes up to minister the word. Hallelujah. She that about singing. Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, 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 Father, we thank you this morning. You alone are worthy of our praise. You alone sit on the throne. You alone deserve the glory and the honor. You alone are king of glory. You alone are the ancient of days. You alone are the lily of the valley. You alone are the rose of Sharon. You alone are our all in all. You are El Shaddai, Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. All that we need, all that has brought us here, and all that we are here for, we decrease that you may increase. Have your way this morning. Open our hearts that we may receive your word. May it be planted in our hearts. Let it root, ground, and establish us this morning. We desire your presence more than anything else. We desire that we see your glory high and lifted up. We desire that we feel you, we touch you, we dine with you this morning. Let not any man who has stepped into this auditorium go back home the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We greet you this morning. Trust uh, you are well. Trust you have been blessed. Trust you are going to be blessed. Look at somebody and say, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I want to share on now faith. Just as I've been waiting on the Lord praying, and seeking his face. It just seemed that this was a message that I needed to share. I haven't shared on faith for quite a while. And suddenly I've got a lot of material. So uh, I'll share this week lay a foundation this week and uh, next week come and 
put some meat on the bones. Iviki ezayo sizaphenduka njalo ukuthi sifake inyama phezu kwamathambo. Amen. Amen. So let's read a couple of scriptures and then we'll get into it. I want to be quite deliberate in what I say. Because like I said, I want to lay a foundation. Hallelujah. Amen. So 2 Timothy 2 verse 13 says if we are faithless he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself. Then of course our theme for the year 1 Thessalonians 5.24 He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. And of course, uh, any faith message without Hebrews chapter 6 verse or 11 verse 6 is not going to be complete. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Then let's go to Hebrews 11 from verse 8. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place that he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, is with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations whose designer and builder is God. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's going to be many other scriptures but I just wanted to lay those as a basis. One of the things I just want to deal with right in the beginning is the issue of faith and reason. And at the end, I will end with another thought there. An old writer illustrates the relationship between faith and reason by comparing them to two travelers. Faith is like a person who can walk long distances. Perhaps 20 or 30 kilometers without feeling tired. On the other hand, reason is like a child who struggles and can only manage two or three kilometers. One day, reason approaches faith and says, let us walk together. Faith responds. Oh, reason, you won't be able to keep up with me. Still, they decide to give it a try. But soon find it difficult to stay together. When they reach a deep river, reason says, I cannot cross this. While faith wades through it effortlessly, singing along the way. When they encounter a tall rocky mountain, reason expresses despair again. 
In these moments, faith has to carry reason on his back to help him keep up. This shows just how much reason depends on faith. So why does God make faith such an important part of our relationship with him. Simply because reason has its limits. When logic and understanding reach a dead end, faith allows us to rise above those challenges and connect with the divine and the mysteries of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. The passage in Hebrews 11, and I want to pick up from verse 8 to 10. I've already read it. I'm not reading it again. But this passage of Scripture focuses on the exemplary faith of Abraham, known as the father of faith or the faithful. His life serves as a model of genuine faith. Despite his imperfections, although revered by Jews and Christians alike, we've got to note that Abraham's life was not without flaws. This text prompts us to reflect on the evidence of genuine faith in our own lives, but using Abraham as a guide. So by examining the specific markers of genuine faith of Abraham, we can assess our standing. This morning, as I just share, why not just consider your own faith? Consider where you are in your walk of faith. You see, faith is now. Many of us think, well, faith is when I need it. No, no, faith faith is now. Look at somebody and say, faith is now. Even as you're sitting here, let me say, you're either going to reason or you're going to have faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews 11, verses 1 and 2. Uh, let me deal with verse 1 in particular. It says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. The amplified, amplified is worth sharing right now. The amplified says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Hallelujah. Amen. See, this is 
what the ancients or the heroes of faith mentioned in Hebrews 11. And this is what they were commended for. This is why they were praised. Maybe I can illustrate it like this. Imagine a tightrope walker stretching a line across a great chasm. The audience watches in awe as he confidently walks across, placing full trust in the rope to hold him. A tightrope walker performs a delicate and skillful act of walking along a thin taut rope or wire often at significant heights. And this requires incredible balance concentration and body control. So having come up with that, I kind of thought, what are the actions? What are, what are the keen key actions that take place in this act of walking a tightrope. Number one, there's got to be balance. There's balancing. The tightrope walker maintains their balance by carefully distributing their weight over the wire. They often use a balancing pole which helps lower their center of gravity. And this, in fact, increases their stability by allowing them to make small adjustments with that pole's weight. Number two, there's got to be foot placement. Every step is slow and deliberate. The walker places one foot directly in front of the other. Gripping the rope with the ball of the foot. Which allows for better control and prevents slipping. Number three, the core engagement. A strong core is crucial. As the walker uses the abdominal muscle and back muscles to keep their body aligned and stable. Number four, the arm movements. Even without a pole, a tightrope walker's arms are often extended to help with balance. Slight adjustments in arm position can help counterbalance shifts in body weight. Number five. Focus. The tightrope walker maintains a forward gaze, often focusing on specific points ahead. And the reason for this, it keeps him steady. Rather than looking down at the wire or the ground. Number six. Controlled breathing. Calm, measured breathing helps with focus and reduces tension, allowing for smoother 
more controlled movements. Now there's already a number of years saying, why did he tell me all about that? Hallelujah. Amen. You see, I had nothing else all week to do except to research that. <laughs> But nevertheless, listen to my next statement. In the same way, our faith is like stepping out onto the tightrope. Trusting in something unseen but certain. Let me repeat that for the skeptics. In the same way our faith is like stepping out onto that tightrope trusting in something unseen but certain. That's faith, beloved. So let's explore the meaning of faith and draw lessons from the lives of the heroes of faith. And uh, I want to stay in Hebrews 11 as much as possible. So my first thought is let's define faith. Biblical faith is the trust, the confidence, and belief in God. And uh, this is as described in the scriptures. Hebrews 11.1 defines faith as the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So what does this mean? It's a trust in God's character, His promises, and His actions. Despite not having physical proof or full understanding, biblical faith involves believing that God is who he says he is and will do what he has promised, leading people to act according to his guidance as seen in the lives of the figures like Abraham, Moses, and Paul. It encompasses not just intellectual belief, but a heartfelt commitment that will affect one's actions, thoughts, and values, especially in times of uncertainty. So here's the idea. Faith is confident in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So I'm about to say that faith is more than just a wish. It is a confident belief in God's promises. Even though they are not yet visible. It is trusting God for what is unseen based on his character and word. I think Noah and the story of Noah uh, illustrates this point clearly. See, no one just goes and builds a thing like an ark just for fun. 
I mean, 120 years can't be much fun. What prompted him to build this thing? I believe that he built the ark trusting God about a flood that had never been seen before. He didn't know what a flood was. He didn't have a clue that water is going to come out of the sky. But God told him to build it, so he built it. His faith was in God's words and not in his own understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It wasn't in reason. It was in faith. So ask yourself, do I trust God even when I can't see the outcome? You see, faith means stepping out or forward in obedience even when the future is unclear. Hallelujah. Amen. My second thought faith in the lives of the ancients. In Hebrews 11.2, this is what it says. It says, for by faith, trust, and holy fervor, born of faith. The men of old had divine testimony born to them and obtained a good report. Hallelujah. The fathers of faith were commended for their faith. You read Hebrews 11. Many of them didn't even see the fulfillment of their faith. But yet they are commended for that faith. See, the people mentioned in the Bible in Hebrews 11 were ordinary people who were called to trust God. Look at somebody and say they were ordinary people called to trust God. And they were called to trust God in extraordinary ways. They were not commended because of their performance perfection or the things that they did. But they were commended and praised for what? Because of their faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Abraham, Abraham, in Hebrews 11, 8 to 10, and I did read that, so we're not going back there. But in summary, Abraham left his homeland without knowing where he was going. And I want to say simply because God told him to. We don't see any other reason. God told him to go and he up and he went. His faith was rewarded as he became the father of many nations. If we go to Moses, Hebrews 11, 24 to 27. It says, by faith Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ 
greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. So in summary, Moses chose to leave the pleasures of Egypt to suffer with God's people, trusting in the invisible God over the visible riches of Egypt or the world. See, like the ancients, the heroes of faith, we too are called to live by faith. We may not see the full picture, but we trust the one who does. So question this morning is, are we willing to step out in faith like Abraham, like Moses, even if the way ahead is unclear? See, that's the challenge. That's the question that we've got to answer. I can't answer it for you. I've got enough on my plate. And I've got to give my own answer. In the same way, you must give an answer to So my third point is, let us consider the reward of faith. Hebrews 11, 2. says, for by it the people of old receive their commendation or receive praise. You see, faith brings commendation, it brings praise from the Lord. The people in Hebrews 11 were honored here because of their faith. Hallelujah. Amen. They believed in God's promises and their lives respect reflected that trust leading to eternal reward and impact. Let's take an unlikely person and look at their life. In Hebrews, in Hebrews 1131, it says they by faith by faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those that were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. So now we find that Rahab is a significant figure in the Bible. Known primary for her role in the conquest of Jericho. And you can see that uh, in the book of Joshua, chapter 2 and 6. So who was this? She was a Canaanite woman who lived in the city of Jericho and there she is identified as a prostitute. Despite her background, Rahab played a critical or crucial part in helping the Israelites. So I had a whole lot of time on my hands again this week. And so I check this out. What are the key points about Rahab? 
Number one, she assisted the spies. When Joshua sent two spies to scout out the city of Jericho, before the Israelites attacked, Rahab sheltered them in her home. Knowing that the city was about to fall to the Israelites, she protected the spies from the king of Jericho by hiding them on a roof under stalks of flax. Number two, her faith in God. Did you hear what I said? Her faith in God. Doesn't seem like a person like this could have faith. But this is one of the facts. Her faith in God. Rahab had heard about the Israelites' previous victories and believed in the power of God, the God of Israel. She actually expressed her faith by telling the spies that she she knew that the Lord had given them the land and that fear had fallen on the people of Jericho because of God's might. I mean, that's in the scripture. Her faith was in the fact that she knew. Unseen, but she knew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at somebody and say, got the point. Number three. The scarlet cord. In exchange for her help, the spies promised to spare Rahab and her family during the conquest of Jericho. They told her to tie a scarlet cord in her window as a sign. So when the city was attacked, her household would be spared. Number four, she was preserved and blessed. When Jericho fell, Rahab and her family were indeed spared, as recorded in Joshua 6. She later joined the Israelites. And we see that uh, she became an ancestor of King David and ultimately of the Lord. Rahab is one of the few women mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus. Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. Number five, the New Testament references. Rahab is praised for her faith and good works in the New Testament. In Hebrews 11.31, she is listed amongst the heroes of faith. And also in the book of James. Chapter 2, verse 25. And in the same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way. See, her actions are cited as evidence that faith without works is there. Rahab's story is often seen as an example of God's grace and, the, and power of faith. So despite her past, she was redeemed and given a significant place in 
biblical history. So what's the application here? See, living by faith pleases God. And there is a commendation for those who trust Him. This commendation is not only for this life, but for eternity. Hallelujah. As shown by Hebrews 11. So faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we don't see. The lives of these Ancients show us what it means to trust God in the unseen. And we too are called to live by faith. So what's the challenge? The challenge that I put to us is are you living by faith in God's promises? Even when they seem far off or invisible. We all must take a step of faith today, trusting in one who is faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. Trusting in the one who is faithful. So consider the roots of a tree. We had one of those big flat top trees in our front garden. And uh, over the years, I was cutting the bottom branches. Amen. Amen. And so we were getting up and up and up. And finally, we had this wonderful, nice, big, flat top thorn tree. Many birds in it. And uh, much shade. Was, was a great tree. One night, a big wind came. And in the morning, my big flat top tree was lying on the ground. Hallelujah. Amen. What I discovered was that there was a big hole and the roots were very shallow. It didn't have much depth at all. So in the wind, it blew over. It left me a big patch in the middle of my lawn. Hallelujah. Amen. So what I'm saying is, consider the roots of a tree. Though they are unseen, in most cases, they produce strength and stability for the tree to stand tall. Amen. Amen. In the same way, our faith in God, though unseen, gives us the foundation to live strong and faithful lives. Hallelujah. Amen. See, that's the only way we can live our life is by our faith, by our obedience, and by trusting God and His Word. Look at somebody and say, that's the only way. It's the only, only way. Amen. Amen. So we've got to conduct our lives by faith. So I am coming to the end of my part one. Let's understand reason and faith. By now, you've forgotten what I said in the first place. Amen. Unless you go back in your notes. And if you took in your notes. But for now, put that aside. What is the understanding of reason and faith? Look at somebody and say, you've got two eyes for a reason. Both of them are meant 
to help us see the world clearly. Amen. Amen. If you've got two, good. If you've had one for half your life, it's still good. Amen. Amen. The good thing is I can close one and you disappear. <laughs> I can look through the other one and you hazy. But we have two eyes for a reason. Both of them are there to help us see the world clearly. This idea applies to how we understand important truths in life as well. We can use two main tools to grasp spiritual truths. And we can do this by reason and by faith. Reason is about thinking, questioning, and seeking or looking for explanation. Faith, on the other hand, involves trust and a deeper, more intuitive understanding. Sometimes, it might seem like reason and faith are at odds. However, they actually work together. Reason helps pave the way for faith. And both are needed to explore our beliefs. We shouldn't just take things on faith without thinking. Instead, we should be prepared to explain our beliefs to others who ask about them. There's three key questions that reason can help us with. First, is the Bible truly a message from God? Second, what does it convey? Third, how does its message relate to our responsibility? Once we address these questions, faith can step in to accept the Bible's teaching as important and trustworthy. We may not understand everything in the Bible, but we can trust that God's wisdom is greater than ours. So while reason helps us find answers, faith guides us in accepting what we learn. I hope that helps you a little. Hallelujah. Amen. So the whole thing about faith, as I've laid it out this morning and just put down a foundation, I trust we can come to the place where we reconsider the truth of God's word. Many of us need to get back to those basic things. Somehow we can claim a promise. And it's not hard for us to just repeat the promise. Confess the promise. Make a declaration around the promise. But never come to the place where we actually believe the promise. 
How do I know that? Because I'm guilty of it myself. Hallelujah. Amen. But beloved, we need to grip God's heart. Because you know, sometimes it takes a while for that promise to manifest. As I get older, I hate to tell you this, but it seems like it takes longer. Amen. Amen. It's almost like the Lord wants me to figure it out. Amen. Amen. And so reason and faith become a problem. You find that we're more involved in reasoning than in fighting. Hallelujah. Amen. So we've got to get this right. Can we understand that many of the heroes of faith never saw the fulfillment of the promise? Yet they remained faithful. Hence the verse that I shared right in the beginning. Hallelujah. Even when we are faithless, he is still faithful. Faithful and he'll surely do it. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Next week you get an hour or two. So take your break this morning. Look at, look at somebody and say, thank the Lord, it's been short. Come next week for a long one. That means you come by faith. Because you don't know what is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hand up. Instead of me praying this morning, why don't you pray? Why don't you say, Lord, where am I in regard to faith? And that's a, a fair question. Where are you in respect to faith? See, many of us, we can quote the, the promise. But can we stand until the promise is fulfilled? And so Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, this morning I thank you that as Lord we looked at your word and as Father we just realized that without faith it's impossible to please you. And Father, we've got to continue to diligently seek you and believe that you are our God and the fulfill, fulfillment of the promise. And so, Lord, right now, as we just stand in your presence, I'm asking you to just put your finger on us, on us individually, Lord. Father, we want to be amongst those that are commended, who are praised for our faith. Not as those that, Lord, have walked in presumption and in foolishness, but, Lord, those that have stood in faith, believing you, trusting you, and, Lord, seeing the fulfillment of what we've believed. And so, Lord, just breathe upon each one, touch each one this morning, stir and challenge us, Lord. And my prayer today, Father, that as we read your word, and as, Father, we study and as we get into the Word in this coming week, Lord, those things that pertain to faith would just jump out at us. Those things that relate to faith would just stir us. They would challenge us again. And, Father, I thank you. There won't be reasoning in it. But, Father, there'll be faith in it. But, Lord, we won't. Lord, just take 
this lightly, but Father, we'll be challenged by it. And Father, I believe that in the coming days ahead, we're going to need faith like never before. We're going to, Lord, have to look to you to see, Lord, that every need is indeed met. We're going to have to look to you, Lord, in every challenge that comes our way. And Father, I thank you that, Lord, you have promised that we would be overcomers. That, Lord, we would be steadfast, we would be immovable as, Father, we go about your business. And so, Lord, right now in Jesus' mighty name, pray for a fresh stirring, Lord. Our faith wouldn't be fickle, but, Lord, it would be a sure faith, a faith that believes, a faith, Lord, that puts its trust and its confidence in that which is unseen. And, Lord, unseen simply because you've said it, we'll believe it, Lord. And so, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your touch. Thank you, Father, for just working in our hearts, working in our lives. And, Father, thank you that, Lord, we would be men and women of faith, genuine, true faith, Lord. Not a flaky faith, but a, a true faith, Lord. A faith that looks to you yes, for the answers that we need. Yes, yes, so, Father, I ask you to just touch each one, bless each one, bless each family, Lord, yes, Lord. in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Whatever the need is today, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that, Father, you would undertake. You would undertake, Lord, in a supernatural, in an amazing way. Whatever that need is. Father, it's covered in your word, and today, in Jesus' name, as your people reach out, and Father, there are those that need a touch from you. There are those that need provision, protection. There are those that, Lord, need healing. And so, Lord, right now, in Jesus' mighty name, as we look to you, Father, I thank you. You unseen but, Lord, your promises are real. They are yea, they are amen. And, Father, there's no shadow or turning. There's no darkness, Lord. We live in the light. And today, Father, I thank you that you just pour out your love and your light upon each life, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Just nudge your neighbor and say, did you hear the word? Will you use it? You see, it's more appropriate for us to hear this word.